All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the next section here. We're going to start taking a look at rational function and holes. Uh, it's so good, it got a whole section. Boom, use that joke twice now. I love it. Uh, all right, let's take a look at a graph here. So I love looking at graphs. I can see the hole right there is that uh, circle. So it looks like when x is 3, we've got this problem with the graph. So we've got this hole. And again, we're just going to define this with limit notation here. So we're going to kind of say, okay, as I approach 3, this whole idea from the left, so follow your graph, two, 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 coming along, chilling, what am I approaching? I'm approaching 1 here. So I'm approaching 1 from the left. What about as I approach uh, 3 from the right side? So if I'm coming this way, ch -ch 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 -ch, what am I also approaching? I'm also approaching 1. So we're back to these uh, one-sided limits here. Last time we looked at vertical asymptotes. This time we're looking at holes. And again, I'm going to type this out down here because my handwriting is a little rough. Okay, so it approaches 1 as I come in from the left. And over here as x approaches 3 from the right, what's happening on the right side? It too is approaching 1. The function approaches 1. Awesome. So we're just kind of throwing some formal limit notation in there with a hole. Great. Let's take another uh, example here without seeing the graph. Let's see if we can answer these and come up with our notation. So on bottom, let's factor this bad boy out. What multiplies to 6 uh, adds or subtracts to 1. So I'm going to think this is plus 3 and minus 2. If I do a quick factoring. On top, does that clean up at all? Yes. We can take a 10 out. And if I would take the 10 out... What's left? We've got x plus 3. And remember, what causes the hole in the graph? It's when it cancels out. So there's the problem. These cancel. So at negative 3, I'm going to have a hole. They cancel each other out. So let's write the notation real quick. We've got the limit. What's happening? I'm approaching as x approaches negative 3 is where my issue is. And from the left side. And we're talking about the g of x in this case. So we have to figure that out and then come over here. What happens as I approach that point from the right side? So as I approach negative 3 over here, and the little plus means from the right side, so make sure we have the notation there of the function, what's happening here. So we're going to need a graph or a table of values or something to kind of see what's going on. I think I pre-graphed it here if you want to pause and draw that little picture in there. But now I can kind of see what's happening here. So I can see, okay, as I approach negative 3, here's negative 3, there's the hole. As I come in from the left side, what's the y value it's approaching? It's negative 2. So I'm really looking at negative 2 here. And again, as I come in to the right side, as I'm going in closer and closer and closer, closer to negative 3, the y value is also approaching negative 2. So we're just kind of putting some limit notation with the hole right there. Boom, that's half the examples done and done. Rock and roll. Same example here. I just want to make a table of values. So could we do it with a table of values? Sure, here I am approaching 3 from the left. Here I am approaching 3 from the right. So if you want to look at this, you're approaching what? We're saying x is approaching negative 3 from the left side. It does get kind of weird with negatives. You know, you want to be farther away from 0 to be more negative or from the left. And then if you're closer to 0, you're actually approaching from the right. So that is a little weird to think about. Don't stress. You're cool. We're all good here. So of the function. So again, this is the same thing, but you're proving it with a table of values. Let's just do it real quick. I went ahead and I think I preloaded this. Let's see how prepared Mr. Brust is today. Boom. Preloaded. And then you can go to your table. Again, if you're not in the right mode, just go second window, which is table set, and make sure the independent variable is set to ask because we're going to ask it questions. So let's go ahead and can we fill out... This table first, negative 3, so negative 3.1. You need to pause me, put your equation in, catch up, that's cool. I'm going to keep on rolling here, though. Uh, so plug that one in. We're going to plug in 3 point, how many zeros? Zero, zero, 001, there we go. And then I'm getting super close, negative 3.0001. So, okay, the whole idea is we're getting closer to negative 3 from the left. Check it out, your calculator already rounded, so be careful. Up here, it, looks, it says negative 3, but really I typed in negative 3.001. It will round at some point, which means this answer over here is probably rounded. Yeah, it's telling you negative 2 at the quick glance, but you have to put your cursor over it to see that it's actually 1.9999. Uh, very, very, very close. Same thing here. I mean, these are so close right here. So what's the change here? It barely changed a little bit at all. So let's fill these bad boys in to our table. Actually, I'm going to kind of cheat if that's cool. Okay, so let's fill this in. I got 
0.961. Let's get the general idea here. I've got negative 1.996. It's not really negative 2. It's 1.9996. And then the next one is not on there, but I know it's like 1.99996 or something like that. So ideally, you can see as I get closer to 3 from the left, what is the function doing? It's getting closer and closer and closer to negative 2. Awesome. Let's do it from the other side now. So can we do it from as I approach from the right? So I'll slide this bad boy over. Let's go back up here and clear all these out. And again, we've been doing this. We did this for uh, vertical asymptotes. So we're doing the same thing, but now we're looking, we're checking it on a whole. So as I come in from the right side, negative 2.8. Nine, nine, I'm getting closer and closer. Negative 2.999. So sensitive. <laughs> Got that extra nine there. And then negative 2.1234. Awesome. Just double checking. And again, I feel like it's doing some rounding already. The calculator wants to tell you it's negative two. It's not really. It's very, 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 very close. And again, this whole idea is just so we're cool is if you did type in negative three, it can't exist. That's an error. That's a hole in the graph. But you've got numbers like this. This one, I am just going to steal and put it in here and leave it as a table. And you can kind of see what's happening here. I'm getting so, 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 so close to negative 2. So I'm going to put in negative 2 here. So you may have to just highlight over here, hover over to see the real points to type in. Awesome. And again, just so we're cool, when you go back to that graph, oh, I thought it popped right up. When you go back to that graph, we can see what's happening. I'm approaching negative 2. So you can use a graph. You can use a table um, and to see what's happening with your limit. Awesome. All right. Let's go ahead and say some weird things can happen here. So this one's kind of already factored. Take a look at example 3 on the next page. Well, this is already factored. Remember, this is grouped. If you don't write them, I mean, you write anything down here is grouped. So right off the bat, I can say, hey, these cancel. So I know I'm going to have this hole here at negative 1. So I've got an issue at x equals negative 1, I'm sorry, positive 1 at 1, because that was a factor that's a 1 that makes a 0. And then what's left over here? Well, let's just go straight to the graph so you can see, oh my goodness, well, this is a parabola. This is a quadratic. These canceled out, and you're left with this negative x squared, which is a quadratic. It's just that. So this does not look like a rational function, but it did start off as 1. It just canceled into a polynomial. The only difference is now it's got a hole. Where's that hole when x is 1? So as I get here, 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 it's approach, it's good approaching 5 from the left and from the right. So don't freak out. You're like, Mr. Press says polynomial. It is with a hole in it, but the original one was a rational function. Awesome. Super cool. Excellent. Here's the formal definition of them. Uh, we've had one every time with a polynomial divided by a polynomial. It's a rational function. Um, and then we're talking about multiplicity in the next one here about how does it find a hole as long as it cancels the top and the bottom, the multiplicity is not bigger on bottom, we're cool. Let's show that multiplicity thing right now. So let's try without the picture and then I will throw the graph up there. But again, anytime I get these, I really like the factored form. I feel like we've used this, what multiplies to 12? I feel like I've seen this somewhere. It's plus six minus two. And on top, you got the multiplicity. Uh, so x minus two times x minus 2. So let's get this all the way out to factored form like this. And then now let's just go through the motions and see what happens. Let's talk domain. I know I'm going to have issues at negative 6 and 2. Those are problematic for us. So we're cool. Anything from negative infinity to negative 6, totally cool. And union with what? Negative 6 to 2, totally cool. And what's my last section here? And union with anything from 2 to infinity, totally cool. I'm good to go with that. Everything is defined on those intervals. Do I have a hole here? Yes, I do. This is going to cancel. This is going to cancel. So at 2, I have a hole. And now, last time, remember I had that vertical asymptote that overrode it with the multiplicity? This time, the multiplicity on top, it's not going to get overridden. So there is a hole at 2. Uh-oh, this is a problem. Now I'm looking at my 0. Wait a minute. It says 0 is a 2, but the, the hole's at 2. Well, if there's a hole at the zero, there is no zero. The hole wins here. So this is kind of weird. It happens occasionally with multiplicity. Let's look at the graph to make sure we got it. This is the graph right here. So I can see 
Oh man, the hole is actually on the zero, so there is no zero. So in this case, it doesn't overwrite it. The hole wins, hole's got it. Awesome. How about vertical acid? Up? Yes, I can see it right here at negative six. I can tell the bottom you're dividing by that, you get that uh, negative six. And you can see it right here on the graph. There's that vertical asymptote. And is there a horizontal asymptote? So again, you're gonna wanna multiply out that top or really, you know, x minus two times x minus two gives you that x squared minus four x plus four. So we're looking for those highest powers and on bottom you have an x squared, on top you have an x squared. So you're gonna take the leading coefficients, which is one over one. So yes, there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals one. Hard to see on my graph here, but this will happen. This will, you can see to the right it approaches it. This bad boy is gonna come down and eventually get there. I could extend the graph if you want. And again, I'm gonna ask you things that are kind of old school. Let's talk about in behavior. I may ask you for the whole uh, and limit notation or something like that. We could totally do that. But in behavior is just looking at negative infinity. What happens to the function of the h of x as I go left? And just for some closure. This should be a great chapter for us. We're going to kind of repeat the things over and over. So hopefully by the end, it's going to be so smooth. So smooth. All right. So there we go. Though That's just in behavior notation. What happens is I go left. Well, I can look at the graph or I can look at the horizontal asymptote. In this case, well, I need the graph to show that, yes, it is going to 1. And then this guy over here is going to 1. Excellent. So we're putting a lot of different things together. Um, I think that's it right there. Good luck on the practice. Good luck on the master check. Peace out.